my bike on this uh, this bike path that starts downtown and it makes its way way out into the woods. So one moment you can be riding in traffic, you know, in among office buildings, and the next moment you're out in the middle of nowhere, and it is beautiful. And there's just like a canopy of trees up above, and for a while there you ride beside a river and over a couple bridges, and at one point I come around this bend and there are geese all over the bike path. And I'm assuming that as I ride up, they're going to scatter, but they don't. I mean, they just stay put on the bike trail. So I slow down to the point where I actually have to stop. And I'm standing there, kind of with my bike by my side, and they're not moving. So I walk towards them, thinking maybe I'll just kind of intimidate them as they're moving. And they're, they're not going anywhere. Geese <laughs> everywhere. And I have this, this kind of slow burn starts to kick in. Like, this is not right. And... And so I uh, grab my bike and, and I head at them even faster, like kind of with more authority. That maybe I can just intimidate them into getting out of the way. And it's a, at that moment, I hear a sound that no human being should ever have to endure. One of the geese, the, the biggest one, starts to hiss. And, and if you've ever heard this hiss before, if you've ever heard a geese or a goose or whatever, if you've ever heard a goose hiss, it is a truly satanic noise. And the biggest one starts to hiss at me, and I realize at that moment that I am up against the mother. And so I back up, and uh, I kind of strengthen my resolve, and then I start walking as fast as I can right towards him. At this moment, the mother lowers her body down so she's like an inch off of the ground, and then she sticks her neck straight out like a bayonet. She lets out a hiss, I swear to you, straight from the pit of hell, and she attacks me. She charges after me. I literally have to use my bike to protect myself as I throw it over my shoulder and take off running down the trail the other way. <laughs> it takes me like a while to collect myself. I mean, is there anything more humiliating than getting shut down by Mother Goose? And, and I realized later that I was up against more than just a goose. I was up against a universal truth that when it comes to her children, a mother is not messing around. And if she thinks you are a threat to her kids, uh, you are in trouble. I remember, uh, I remember being in this village in Africa, and the mothers get up at sunrise, and they take these jars, these empty buckets, and they walk miles. It takes them hours to the nearest water source. They fill up their jar, and then they walk the hours and hours back just so that their children will have water. And then they do it the next day, and they do it the next day, and they do it the next day. There is this maternal impulse, this ancient nurturing instinct, and it transcends time. It transcends culture. It transcends economics. There is an ancient mothering impulse. And it's also it's also a divine impulse. Throughout the Bible, God is described as compassionate. In, in Hebrew, the original language of the scriptures, it's the word raham. It's also the word for womb. So God is compassionate. God is, God is womb-like. I mean, this is a feminine image for God. Now see, a lot of people are very comfortable with male imagery for God. You know, so God is the father, God is the warrior, God is the judge, God is the lawgiver. But feminine images for God? Or there's this great line in the book of Job. God is pointing out all of the complexity and creativity of creation and essentially saying to Job, what do you think made all this? And at one point, God asks Job, from whose womb came the ice? Who gave birth to the frost from the heavens? I mean, God's answer to Job is God. God's Womb? God gave birth? Obviously it's poetry here, so you can't take it too literally. But this is feminine imagery for God. Now these images can be very helpful in describing the divine. But Jesus said that God is spirit. And spirit has no shape. It has no form. It, it has no physical essence. I mean, God is, in essence, beyond male and female, or perhaps you could say it more accurately, God transcends and yet includes what we know as male 
and female. Like how the Bible begins in this creation poem of Genesis 1. It says that God created them male and female. In the image of God, they were created. So a man is created in the image of God. A woman is created in the image of God. And this, this actually goes way beyond whether a woman is a mother or not. Because some women are mothers and some women aren't. But, but there is a masculine dimension to God and there is a woman who is created in the image of God. And this, this actually goes way beyond whether a woman is a mother or not. Because some women are mothers and some women aren't. But, but there is a masculine dimension to God and there is a feminine dimension to God. This is what was so revolutionary about the early Christian church. Women were witnesses to the resurrection, which was groundbreaking enough in its day, but then in this early church, when you had women leading, organizing, making decisions, it was women who supported Jesus in his teaching and his traveling. Women paid his bills. Like, like in the letter to the Galatians, one of the first Christians, a man named Paul, he wrote, that in Christ, in this new reality of Christ, there is neither male nor female. A lot of scholars argue this is the first place in human history where somebody argued for the equality of the sexes. I mean, if you don't have her leadership, if you don't have her wisdom, her voice, her perspective, you're not just missing her, you're missing something central to the very core of who God is. If you're a woman and you've been made to feel second class in the Jesus movement, I mean, maybe you've been taught blatantly or you've picked it up subtly that it's like it's nice that you're here, but, but men do the real work around here. That is just not right. That, I'm sorry you've had that experience because it's not what Jesus had in mind. Now, sometimes what happens is equality gets confused with difference, as if we're all the same. And what gets lost in the process is the uniqueness of each of us being who we were made to be. So you don't need to run from the differences. You can embrace them. I mean, some women are mothers, some aren't. Some run companies, some stay home. Some live out very traditional roles. Others break all sorts of new ground. And it's all a reflection of the creativity, of the diversity, of the variety, of the God who's bigger than any of our language. In the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah is speaking to his people and they're in exile. They're miles from home and they've been crushed and broken and destroyed. And they're wondering if they even have a tomorrow. And Isaiah says to them, he says, this is what the Lord says. As a mother comforts a child, so will I comfort you. A couple of years ago, my friend got really sick, like life and death kind of sick. And I used to go and visit him, and every time I would visit him, his mother would be there. She'd be somewhere in the room, she'd be beside his bed. She was all over every detail of his recovery. And when Isaiah is speaking to his people, who are wondering if they even have a future, they're disillusioned, they're filled with despair, they don't have any hope, of all the images Isaiah could use, Isaiah essentially says to them, have you ever seen a mother comfort a child? Well, that is what God is like, and that is what God is going to do for you. I mean, none of us had anything to do with our birth. We received without giving anything. We were totally helpless. And some woman somewhere, your mother, brought you into this world. Her labor, her work, her pain for your life. When you see a, a mother doing her mother thing, when a mother's heart breaks for her children, she is tapping in to the very nature of who God is and what God is like. And that is a gift. That is grace. That is divine. So may you embrace the God who's bigger than any of our language. May you celebrate all of the images and pictures and metaphors that help us better understand who God is and what God is like. 
And may you be comforted as a mother comforts a child.